Welcome to this video where you will learn 100 random facts about the 2022 CFL season. The facts in this video are mainly in chronological order. The majority of these are taken from the CFL's website and news articles throughout the season. Some of the facts will come fast, so pay attention. And here we go with the first one. In 2021, after the one-year hiatus, the CFL had 111 first-year players play in week one which represented 28% of all 396 players dressed that week. In 2022, only 78 first-year CFL players made the opening week rosters. That is just 16% of all players dressed. To start the 2022 season, all nine head coaches were previous CFL head coaches. It's the first time since 2003 that the CFL season did not start with a first-year head coach. Out of the nine head coaches, five were former players in Dickinson, O'Shea, Kari Jones, Steinauer, and Dinwiddie. Bo Levi Mitchell came into the season needing 1,660 passing yards to pass Henry Burris for most all-time in Stampeders franchise history. He surpassed Burris for number one in Week 10 versus the Lions. The Lions roster featured two Canadians at the quarterback position. No team in CFL history has ever had both their number one and number two QBs as Canadians. Prior to Ford and Rourke throwing in week one's finale, the only other game in where two Canadian quarterbacks threw a pass came back in September 1955, when Calgary had two Canadians play quarterback in a game. James Butler started the season tying the BC record with four touchdowns in a single game. This was previously set by G. Roy Simon in 2004. Second and goal. Oh my goodness. They've got him again. It's Butler. The Lions scored 59 points against the Elks in their season opener, which is the second most points they've ever scored in a game. Their highest was 67 points against Shreveport in 1994. The Riders scored two touchdowns in 20 seconds against Hamilton in the final three minutes. The two touchdowns were the fastest ever scored by the Riders in the final three minutes of a game. Calgary's comeback to win from being down 24-0 matched the eighth largest in CFL history and was Calgary's fourth largest. On the flip side, Hamilton's 24-point blown lead was the third largest in their team's history. In games where teams had more sacks, won 55 times in 2022. On the flip side, teams that allowed more sacks in a game only won 31 times the last time the Argos lost more than one game in a row was back near the end of the 2019 season. That's 19 games since the last time they lost more than one game in a row. Grant's 97-yard touchdown return on the opening kickoff is the 12th opening play touchdown return in CFL history. Chandler Worthy also had one for Montreal earlier this season. Grant down to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and he's going to take it all the way home to start the football game. The Week 6 matchup between Calgary and Winnipeg had the last two undefeated teams in 2022 play each other. Both teams combined for nine victories, which is the most in a battle of unbeaten CFL teams since 7-0 Edmonton Eskimos faced the 4-0 Hamilton Tiger Cats during the 1961 season. The Argos and Rough Riders met in the first ever CFL regular season game played in Nova Scotia. The game took place at Raymond Field in Wolfville, Nova Scotia, and was the fifth edition of Touchdown Atlantic. The first four were held in Moncton, New Brunswick. The Riders' loss to the Argos when having a lead after three quarters is the first time they've lost after leading after three quarters since 2018 against the Red Blacks. Andrew Harris became the sixth player in CFL history to go over 10,000 rushing yards. Still going and breaking tackles inside the four. Dane Evans had a five-game streak of at least two interceptions in a game, stretching back to 2021. The last player with five multi-interception starts in a row was way back in 1989 to 1990 by Tom Burgess. 
On July 6th, Montreal fired head coach Jones. The Owls have made the most in-season head coaching changes in recent years. Between 2013 and 2022, there have been eight in-season coaching changes in the CFL, including La Police, who was fired in October 2022. Montreal has made five of them. They moved on from Hawkins, Higgins, Pop, Chapdelaine, and Jones during the season. Montreal's loss to Edmonton after leading by 19 points was their largest blown lead since 2013. That 2013 defeat was a 38-27 loss to Calgary after being up by 24. The Riders had an eight-game win streak over the Lions, snapped in Week 8, ending their longest winning run against BC since 1972 when they beat the Lions 21 games in a row. Their 21-game winning streak spanned from October 1965 to October 1972. The last Lions victory in Regina came on October 29, 2016. Riders linebackers Larry Dean had 101 tackles, and Darnell Sankey led the CFL with 120 tackles. It's the second time in CFL history that a team had two players making at least 100 tackles. The only other time was the Lions in 2016 with Big Hill and Elamimian. The CFL also hasn't had a 100-plus tackle season since 2018. In weeks 6 and 7 against the Riders, the Argos scored on a McManus' 50-yard interception and a special team's 10-yard fumble return. The last time that the Argos scored on defense in back-to-back games was in 2018. Does for a moment, loses the ball! Here are two of the seven completions the Kalaros had against the Elks. The last time a team won with just seven completed passes was Winnipeg in August of 2019 against Edmonton. There has only been four teams since 2000 that won a game with just seven completed passes. The Week 8 game between the Bombers and Stamps had seven lead changes with neither team leading by more than seven points. That is the most lead changes in a Bombers game since 1991. Since 1907, there has only been 23 games with seven lead changes. In Week 6 against the Elks, Nathan Rourke completed 34 of 37 passes for a 91.9 completion percentage. That is the highest completion percentage by a player with at least 30 passes in CFL history. Rourke broke Trevor Harris's previous record of 90.3% set in 2016. In Weeks 9 and 10, Montreal and Winnipeg had a back-to-back series. It is the sixth time both teams engaged in back-to-back games with each other. Montreal had the only sweep in 2003. The other four matchups were splits. Montreal became the first team in CFL history to defeat a 9-0 and team. There have been seven teams to start the season with nine straight wins since 1948. All the 9-0 and teams before won their 10th game in a row. In Week 10, Calaro suffered his first loss in Winnipeg since October 13, 2018. In his last loss in Winnipeg, he was playing for the visiting Riders and lost 31-0. Toronto scored on a fumble, and interception returns in Week 9 against the Ticats, repeating that feat from last October against Ottawa when they recorded a CFL record three defensive scores in one game. The last time that the Ticats allowed an opponent interception and fumble return for touchdowns in the same game was back in 2003 against the Argos. Bo Levi Mitchell did not throw for a touchdown in Week 8 against Winnipeg and Week 9 against Ottawa, marking the first time in his CFL career he went two games without at least a touchdown pass. The Riders extended their win streak against Edmonton to seven games. That includes their last four trips to Edmonton, It is the first time since 1967 that they have won three or more in a row at Edmonton. In his first eight games this season, Nathan Rook compiled 2,906 passing yards. That is the most passing yards in the first eight games to start the season since Matt Dunnigan in 1994. BC's 17-point comeback was their largest comeback since July 25, 2008, when they came back from down 18 points against Montreal. From 25 yards to complete a comeback for the visitors 
and he knocks it home. Winnipeg's 31-29 win over Calgary was their 400th win at home, dating back to the foundation of the West Division in 1936. The Bombers are also the first team in CFL history to reach 400 victories at home. With Michael O'Connor starting at quarterback due to an injury with Rook, it will be the second time in CFL history that a team started two different Canadian quarterbacks in consecutive games. The only other time this happened was Calgary in 1955. The 18 point lead that the Elks had over the Red Blacks was the largest Elks lead in their last 36 games. They trailed by nine, but outscored the Red Blacks 27 0 over 26 minutes to win comfortably. The Bombers clinched a playoff spot with six games remaining matching their quickest playoff clinch of all time for an 18-game season. The last time the Bombers clinched a playoff spot this early was in 2001, when they started 10-2 and with six games left in the season. For the first time since 1956, the Argos and Tiger Cats play each other four times in a stretch of five games. That has happened only once in their rivalry in 1956. The Argos won their first Labor Day game since 2012, defeating the Ticats 28-8. Jamal Peters had five interceptions in two consecutive games. No player has accomplished that since Lester Smith did so for Montreal on July 20th and July 28th, 2000. 10 now, Jalen Morton, quarterback for Hamilton. Oh, it bounces off a deflection pick into the hands of Jamal Peters. In his first 15 CFL starts, Taylor Cornelius has a record of 3-12. Only five QBs have a lower win percentage in CFL history. The Elks finally got a victory in Regina. Edmonton's last win in Regina was on November 4th, 2017, when Michael Riley threw for 294 yards. Snap is good, ball is down, kick is up, and he got it! For the second time in the last 56 years, the Lions won twice in Calgary in the same season. The Week 15 matchup was also the first game that Calgary started a quarterback other than Bo Levi Mitchell against the Lions since 2015, a game that Drew Tate started. For the first time in Montreal's franchise history, they played four straight games at home. Their franchise history spans from 1946 to 1986 and 1996 to present. The Thai Cats defeated the Bombers 48-31 despite having nine fewer wins than the Bombers. That reflects the largest pregame wins-to-loss record gap that they have ever overcome in registering a win. Their win over the Bombers was just the tenth time in all of CFL history that such a nine-plus win gap was overcome by an underdog. This game was also the Bombers' biggest loss in 33 games, when they lost by 20 points to Hamilton on September 27, 2019. The 48 points allowed to the Ticats was the Bombers' most overall since July 2, 2015, a span of 117 games, and again it was against the Ticats that day. In weeks 14 and 16, the Red Blacks hosted the Argos twice in just 14 days. The last time Ottawa played the same opponent at home in a 14-day span was in 1971, also against the Argos. Dave Dickinson became the third Calgary coach to reach 100 wins and trails Wally Buono's 234 wins and John Huffnagle's 144 wins for most all-time in franchise history. Brian Burnham played in nine games this season before retiring. In his career, he played 105 career games and managed at least a catch in every single game. For the first time since 2005, the Stampeders lost three of four home games. McLeod Bethel Thompson is the first Argos quarterback to win four straight starts since Zach Kalaros in 2013. The Bombers extended their winning streak over Edmonton to seven games. This is the Bombers' longest ever winning streak against Edmonton in 84 years, dating back to their first meeting in 1938. Dalton Schoen set a franchise record with 16 touchdown catches, a Bombers record that stood since 1951. 
16 receiving touchdowns in a season is the third most by any player in CFL history. Since 2000, only three Canadian players have gone over 1,000 yards rushing in a season. Brady Oliveira reached that mark, joining Andrew Harris, Jerome Messam, and John Cornish. Needed 19 yards for 1,000. There's 5, 10, 15. He's got 20. In 2015, Bob Dice was named interim head coach mid-season and won his first game against the Bombers. Dice did the same in 2022, defeating the Owls in October in his first game as Red Black's interim head coach. Dice is just one of two coaches to win two in-season debuts. The only other to do so was Jim Pop as a replacement in 2006 and 2015. The Argos managed to finish first in the Eastern Conference in two straight years for the first time since 1996 and 1997. Here is a game where the Lions are leading by more than three points over the Bombers. It's the first time since 2017, a span of seven games where the Lions have had more than a three-point lead over the Bombers. The Bombers, on the other hand, led every one of those games by ten or more. Drew Brown made his first CFL start in October versus the Lions. The last Bombers quarterback to make his CFL debut and win was Alex Brink in 2010. Sean McGuire, Chris Strevler, Dominic Davis, and Robert Marv were the other quarterbacks who lost for the Bombers in their first CFL start. Terry Williams returned kicks for a total of 341 yards against the Bombers the fifth highest single game total in CFL history and a Lions franchise record. Legend in his own mind. There you go. Mark Leggio. See if he can get some of this back. But no, it falls short. Had the accuracy. Just not far enough. And here's a big return. Another one. Here we go again. Terry Williams on the missed field goal is still going. He's not hauled down until he gets it inside. The Winnipeg 20. In the three games before Bob Dice took over as head coach, the Red Blacks struggled on offense. They scored just three of 41 drives for a 7% success rate. In Dice's first two games, they have five offensive touchdowns on 26 possessions for a 19% success rate. In 2022, there were a total of 29 interception or fumble returns for touchdowns, 26 of them from the winning team, three of them by a losing team. The Ticats defeated the Red Blacks in Week 21, overcoming an 11-point deficit. It was their largest comeback to win in their last 39 games, dating back to September 2019 and a 13-point comeback win over the Argos. The Elks lost every game at home again and now have a 17-game losing streak at home. Their current 17-game home losing streak is the longest in CFL history. Their last home win was on October 12th, 2019, over the Lions. The Elks ended the season with 103 players that were either dressed or were put on their injured list. They used 96 different players in their active game rosters in 2022. A total of 68 players have made at least one start for the Elks. The Elks targeted a total of 26 players with pass attempts this season. Walker led the team with both pass attempts and receptions. In the regular season game for the Lions and Bombers, both Nathan Rourke and Zach Kalara started. Their combined record as starters was 22-3, a win rate of 88%. Only one game in CFL history has ever had a higher combined win percentage after a combined 15 games. Hamilton's Joe Zuger and Ottawa's Russ Jackson in 1966 had an 89.5% win rate. The Riders finished the season with a six-game home losing streak, matching their longest since 2001, when they lost seven home games in a row. Kean Schaefer Baker led the Riders with 960 receiving yards. The last Canadian to lead them in receiving was Rob Bagg in 2014, with 803 yards. And more! Kean Schaefer Baker! Get the ball in his hand! Canadian Curly Gittens Jr. led the Argos with 1,101 receiving yards. He also had the most receiving yards in the league among Canadians. 
the last Argos receiver to lead all Canadians in receiving yards was Bobby Taylor in 1969. Mario Alford managed to return a kickoff, punt, and missed field goal for touchdowns. Only four other players in CFL history have scored on all three types of returns in the same season. Dominique Dorsey in 2007, Bashir Levingston in 2004, Marcus Thigpen in 2010, and Henry Williams in 1990. Lorenzo Malden led the CFL this season with 17 sacks. The last Ottawa player to lead the CFL in sacks was Angelo Snipes in 1992 with 20. Meant to him, but you're right. This is the playoff game they're getting ready for now. Blitz coming! Can't get it away! Take it down, and look who it is! The sack leader in the CFL with number 17! <laughs> the Red Blacks lost every game at home this season. Since their inception in 2014, they are the only team over that time whose record is better on the road than at home. The Stamps are the second team in CFL history to win 12 games and not host a home playoff game. The only other team before was the Eskimos in 2017. The Lions finished second place in the West for just the fourth time in their history. It's the first time in their history that they hosted the Stampeders in the semifinal game. The Lions have also never lost a semifinal game at home. First-year receiver Dalton Schoen finished as the CFL's receiving yards leader with 1,441 yards. The last time that a first-year CFL player led the league in receiving yards was in 2000, when Curtis Marsh had 1,560 yards for the Riders. Since 2014, there have been seven in-season head coaching changes. The head coach change made by the Owls in early 2022 is the only one of these seven where the coach to take over led his team into the playoffs. Seth Small set an all-time Ty Cats field goal percentage record in his rookie year. At a 90.7% success rate, he broke the previous Ty Cats record set in 2015 by Justin Medlock at 89.4%. Caleb Evans finished the year with 16 rushing touchdowns, setting a CFL record for most touchdowns in a season by a quarterback. The previous record was 14, set by James Franklin in 2018 and Doug Flutie in 1991. Tommy Stevens became the second quarterback to ever record the longest run in any season. His 85-yarder joined Rakeem Cato's CFL best 73-yard rush in 2016. Stevens is the only quarterback in league history to record any season's single game rushing high total when he rushed for 163 yards against the Riders. To midfield, inside the 50, and eventually he forced out a pound. Tommy Stevens with another big one. We're talking about 150 yards rushing tonight. Both the Elks and Red Blacks lost every game at home this season. It is the only time in CFL history where there were two teams that went winless at home. That side of the field, trying to look it underneath, throws it back shoulder. It's incomplete. Turnover on downs. The Riders allowed 77 sacks this season, which is the most in CFL history. The previous high was the Lions allowing 74 sacks in 2005. Donkey knocking that ball loose. Pajardo now second and 17 in trouble again. Trying to stay on his feet, but he is taken down. In his second CFL season and first as a starter, Nathan Rook set an all-time CFL record with a 78.7 completion mark and ended up with the number two passer rating in league history. On the 36, Rook wasting all time to the end zone for Rook! Sean Lemon finished the year with 14 sacks, matching his career high. With 92 career sacks, he now ranks number 15 all-time. This season, the Stamps entered the playoffs trying to win the Grey Cup without playing a home playoff game for the first time in their history. They also entered the semifinal game on a seven-game losing streak in road semifinal games between 1971 and 2021. The Stamps made the playoffs for the 17th consecutive season, ranging from 2005 to 2022, tying the Bombers from 1980 to 1996 for the fourth longest in league history. 
With another 10 or more win season, the Stamps extended their record to 14 straight seasons above 500. That run ties the Eskimos from 1984 to 1997 for the longest in CFL history having a winning record. Jake Mayer and Nathan Rourke both made their first playoff starts in the same game. The last time that a playoff game featured two debut starters was in 2014 when Bo Levi Mitchell faced Michael Riley. Prior to 2014, the last game to have both quarterbacks making their playoff debuts was 1995, with Danny McManus facing Kerwin Bell. The Owls played in the East semifinal for the 31st time in 67 seasons. With a win over the Ticats, the Owls avoided being the first ever CFL team to lose three straight semifinal games at home. The Lions have a rough history against the Stamps in semifinal games going 0 and 6. However, all six games were played in Calgary. The Lions have never hosted the Stamps in round one of the playoffs until 2022. Since the one game final era in 1972, Home teams have won 70% of the time in the Eastern Final. Out West, home teams have won just 43% of the time in the Western Final. Trevor Harris started a divisional final for a third different team. Only five QBs have ever started a divisional final for three or more teams. Damon Allen, Henry Burris, Matt Dunnigan, Kevin Glenn, and Tom Clements. Ja'Garrett Davis reached the Grey Cup game for a sixth consecutive season and with his third different team. The last player to play in six or more Grey Cup games in a row was Hank Elizik, who played in seven straight from 1977 to 1983. The Bombers made it to their fourth consecutive West Final game, matching a similar run from 1982 to 1985. This is the first time in the single-game playoff format era which started in 1971, that they have hosted back-to-back West Final games. Hard to believe about the Lions' 68-year franchise history, but this is the first time they visited Winnipeg for a division final game. The Lions and Bombers have met three times in previous Western Finals, with those games being played in BC. The Bombers extended their playoff win streak to four games for the first time in 28 years, They last won a third straight playoff game in the 1994 East Semifinal. Note that Grey Cup wins do not count as playoff wins. Teams that scored first won 64% of the time. Enoch Mwamba returned to the Grey Cup for a second time. 11 years after his first one in 2011 with the Bombers. This 11-year gap is the second longest modern-day record for Grey Cup appearances. The modern record for the longest gap between appearances is Yo Murphy at 13 years, from 1994 to 2007. The last time the Argos and Bombers met in a Grey Cup was 72 years ago in the 1950 Mud Bowl. It is the longest continuous gap all time between meetings of any pair of traditional Eastern and Western teams. Three out of the last four Argos head coaches won the Grey Cup by their second season. Ryan Dinwiddie, hired in 2021, won the Cup in 2022. Mark Trestman, hired in 2017, won the Cup in the same year. Scott Milanovic, hired in 2012, won the Cup in the same year. The only Argos coach that didn't win a Grey Cup since 2012 was Corey Chamberlain. With the Grey Cup win, the Argos extend the Grey Cup's longest ever win streak, having won their last seven appearances from 1991 to 2017. And there it is, 100 facts about the 2022 CFL season. Please tell us in your comments which ones surprised you the most and which ones you liked the best. Thanks for watching.